This video will cover the main plotline, setting, characters, and most important events in the book 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northup, a novel which tells the true story of a free man who was tricked and sold into slavery. The information in this video is split up into four sections for the sake of structure. I will cover the main plotline, then I'll move on to setting, thirdly, characters and main events, and then some miscellaneous details that might be relevant for any literature exams you are preparing for. Let's start with the plotline in three sentences. Solomon Northup, born in 1808, is living a happy life as a free man with his family when he is tricked in the year of 1841 by two white men offering him lucrative work with a circus if he travels with these men to Washington DC, a state which was still slave territory at the time. There, he gets cheated by them, and the next day he wakes up in chains. From there on, the book tells the story of how Solomon survived 12 years of being enslaved before being freed and reunited with his family. Let's talk about setting. Solomon was born in Minerva, New York, but sets up a home with his wife in Saratoga Springs. He travels to Washington DC with two men who have promised him work, but he is tricked and ends up in William's slave pen. A steamboat takes Solomon to Richmond, Virginia, into the slave pen of Mr. Gooden. Another boat named Orleans takes Solomon to New Orleans. And a little side note, Solomon planned an escape plan on this boat with two other men, but one of them died due to smallpox. In New Orleans, he ends up with Theophilus Freeman, the slave trader, and then finally, there's three plantations which are relevant for the story. William Ford's plantation in Louisiana in the Bayou Boeuf region, Master Epps' plantation, Solomon is sold to Master Epps after having served Master Ford, and then lastly, Judge Turner's sugar plantation. He harvested sugarcane here, but most of his 12 years Solomon spends on Master Epps' plantation. Alright, on to characters and main events. Let's start with Solomon's family. His wife, whose name is Anne, and they had three children, Elizabeth, Margaret and Alonzo, and lived a happy life. Then the names of Solomon's kidnappers, Merrill Brown and Abram Hamilton, who promise him lucrative work at a circus but trick Solomon and sell him. But a slave dealer and the one who beats up Solomon after he awakes in a cell and claims that he is a free man. But beats Solomon badly enough that he no longer dares to fight for his freedom at this point. Eliza, who Solomon meets in a slave pen, and this is a tragic story about a woman who conceived a child with her master, a pretty girl named Emily, was promised freedom but has now been sold into slavery upon the death of her master. There is an excruciatingly painful scene where Eliza is separated from her children. Her son is sold to someone other than her buyer, and the slave trader refuses to sell her daughter. He thinks she will be worth much more when she's a little bit older due to her beauty. Slave trader Theophilus Freeman, he's the one who changes Solomon's name to Platt. He sells Solomon to William Ford, a kind slave owner who holds church services for his slaves and treats them with kindness. Platt is actually able to show and use his intellect around Ford. Ford then has to sell Solomon or Platt due to financial issues to a man named John Tybeats who has a terrible temper. He gets into a fight with Solomon, which ends up in Solomon whipping Tybeats because he is the stronger man. Tybeats then takes revenge on Solomon by returning with two men and they try to hang Solomon. Ford's overseer, Mr. Chapin, intervenes, however. After that, Solomon is left hanging for a long time until Ford comes and cuts him loose. Tybeats tries to take revenge again a few weeks after, and this time it ends with Solomon having to flee through the horrible swamp filled with dangerous animals and being chased by dogs. He ends up in Ford's house and gets to stay there for the time being. Solomon is then sold to Master Edwin Epps, a horrible plantation owner who treats his slaves in the worst way possible. Solomon spends the majority of his enslaved years with Master Epps. Patsy, the best cotton picker on Master Epps' plantation, but also the victim of the most abuse on the plantation. Her master frequently rapes her, and then she also has to endure the cruelty of Master Epps' wife, who is jealous of her and often orders her husband to whip Patsy. An important event in the story is when Patsy gets the most merciless beating that Solomon has ever witnessed. She went to a nearby plantation to get some soap, is accused of sexual misbehavior, and is whipped in the most gruesome manner while she is tied naked to four stakes in the ground. At Judge Turner's sugar cane plantation, Solomon, or Platt, is particularly good at the work and he earns some more responsibility by being put in charge of other slaves and also some money. Solomon also becomes a driver at Master Epps' plantation, being in charge of the whipping of slaves, which he tries to soften as soon as his master and an overseer are far away enough. Armsby comes to work at Epps' plantation, a white man who has to work as a slave. 
Solomon tries to get him to send a letter on his behalf, but Armsby betrays him. Solomon, however, manages to use his intellect to avoid Master Epps' anger by lying to him. Solomon has been a slave for ten years when a man named Bass is hired by Master Epps. Solomon discovers that Bass is an abolitionist, and together they devise a plan to gain Solomon's freedom. At first there is no response to the letters that the two send, but Bass promises Solomon that he will travel to Saratoga Springs to find help. And one day, Solomon's liberation arrives in the shape of Henry B. Northup, a lawyer and relative of the man who freed Solomon's father from slavery. He spent months preparing a case to liberate Solomon. Before going home, Solomon and Henry B. Northup tried to prosecute Birch, the slave dealer for imprisoning Solomon, but due to a racist system in Washington, D.C., Birch escapes prosecution. The story ends with Solomon reuniting with his family, where he meets his grandson, named Solomon, for the first time. Here are a couple of things I would ask my students about if I were to quiz them on the novel 12 Years a Slave. You need to know that Christmas was a good time for slaves, even under Master Epps. The slaves would enjoy three days of joy per year, on which occasion Solomon would often play the violin, an instrument which he was very good at playing and which brought him a number of benefits throughout his years as a slave. Next, Master Epps and his way of weighing the cotton each slave picked every day and having them whipped if the amount they picked was less than the day before. This was, of course, in and of itself an impossible task for the slaves, and lots of whipping was inevitable. A final cruel thing that Ebbs did that you need to know about is that sometimes, when he was drunk, he would wake all his slaves and make them dance and act in a jolly way in the middle of the night, after which the slaves would be forced to get up again in the early morning to work. The amount of cruelty that one person can inflict seems limitless when it comes to Master Ebbs. I hope this summary was in some way helpful for you. For more videos about English literature and grammar, head over to my channel Illustrated and Explained. <laughs>